everybody. Today we're going to do Unit 8, Lesson 5, which is more completing the square and stretching parabolas. We kind of touched on this a little bit in a previous lesson, but this is going to be some um, intense practice on it. So just to make sure we understand what the leading coefficient in a parabola really tells us about it, we're going to do this one extra lesson and it's gonna give us a little bit more practice with completing the square, but it's gonna be a little more challenging. Okay, so um, for exercise one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look on the calculator. We're going to be sketching these three separate graphs. So y is equal to x squared, then y is equal to two x squared, and then y is equal to four x squared. Use the window indicated on the axes means y is going from here to here, so negative 5 to 15, and x from negative 5 to 5. So you go ahead, grab your calculator. Okay, before anything, I'm going to go to the window and set that up. So my x min should be negative 5. x max should be 5. Leave the scales alone. y min should be negative 5, and y max should be 15. I'm going to go into y equals and I'm gonna do these one at a time so that you can see what's happening. First, we're gonna do x squared, okay? We should already know what this one looks like, right? Nice, normal, quadratic equation. Okay, and we're gonna label it just like that. And now we're going to take a look at what happens when we do y equals two x squared. So enter that in, graph, and we'll see it's become just the slightest bit skinnier. Okay, and then label that y equals 2x squared. And you might be predicting what's going to happen next when we do 4x squared. Let's take a peek. And if you thought it was going to become even skinnier, you were right. So y equals 4x squared is an even squished version here, okay? So again, we did talk about this in a previous lesson, but what you can see is as the leading coefficient gets larger, the graph becomes thinner or skinnier or however you want to think of it. So what's happening when we multiply x squared by a it makes the graph appear thinner. Or you can even say skinnier if you'd like. Okay, so the larger A gets. So A stretches and compresses a parabola depending on whether it's greater than 1 or between 0 and 1. So if it's greater than 1, it stretches it, it I'm sorry, compresses it, makes it skinnier. If it is less than 1 or between 0 and 1, sorry, then that makes it wider. So this is very similar to the base of an exponential function, right? So if our exponential function was between the base was between zero and one um it was the same thing if it was greater than one same thing so what we're going to do is we're going to look at exercise two and we're going to match each of these functions to their graph okay so you just write the number of each so thinking about two things as you do this if your coefficient is positive then remember happy face should be concave up, pointing upwards. If it's negative, frowny face, it's concave down, pointing down, okay? So all of the positive coefficients should be pointing up. Negative coefficients should be pointing down, okay? The second thing you wanna be thinking of is what we just talked about. If the A is greater than one, it's getting thinner, okay? And if A is between zero and one, it's gonna be wider, 
Okay, so let's match them up. So let's start off with the negative ones first that we can get those out of the way. The two graphs that are facing down are gonna match our two um, equations that have negatives. So what we need to decide is which one's gonna be wider and which one's gonna be skinnier. So the, the equation with the larger a value will be thinner. So two, negative two, the absolute value of that at least, is larger, so it's gonna be the skinnier one. So this is gonna be equation three. And that leaves this one as equation five. Okay? Now we'll go to the positives. We have three coefficients. I have one, one half, and three. So which one will be the skinniest? It will be the one with the largest coefficient. So that will be three. So graph one is gonna be the skinniest one. The widest one is gonna be the smaller. So I have one versus one half. So one half is smaller. So that's gonna be graph two for the widest, which leaves the one in the middle as our just typical y x equals x squared, which is graph four. Okay, and that's how you would do it. It's an easy. Going to the second page here. Now we're gonna start talking about how we can use completing the square to find these turning points, which we've done already, but sometimes your a value is not gonna be equal to one. So in the previous example of where we've done completing the square, the a value has been equal to one, and in these, the a value is something that's different than one. So we're going to have to factor something out or manipulate something in some way so that we can use completing the square. So consider the quadratic equation y equals 2x squared minus 12x plus 11. We're going to use completing the square to write the equation in vertex form. So in order to do this, I have to take a look here of what I've got. I've got y equals 2x squared minus 12x plus 11. A is not equal to one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to factor out a two from here and I'm gonna leave the 11 alone. And I am allowed to do this for this purpose only. This is x squared minus six x plus 11, okay? Now I'm going to begin using completing the square. So my B term is negative six we divide that by two and we get negative three and square it and that gives us nine. So we're gonna be adding and subtracting nine in both cases here. The one tricky part that I have to show you is that since we multiplied by two here, we're going to have to multiply the nine by two when we subtract it. So I'll show you what I mean. This is gonna become x squared minus six x plus nine and now, since we're doing our minus nine, we have to include the two, so it's two times nine plus 11. That's gonna be the one difference that you have to remember to add in when you do this, okay? So now we can change this into our perfect square trinomial, uh, binomial, sorry, so you keep the two on the outside. Remember that the <coughs> half number here is gonna be what you use, so this is x minus three squared, and then this is minus 18 plus 11. Okay, and then finally, that leaves us with y is equal to two times x minus three squared minus seven. So now we're in vertex form, that's your final answer. So from here, we just have to decide what our turning points are, okay? so. We can figure out the turning point just from looking here. We know that it's going to be the opposite of what's next to the x. So that's negative three, so it's gonna be positive three. And then it's gonna be the same as what's at the end. So that's gonna be negative seven. So our turning point would be three, negative seven. And you can, when it says to provide evidence from a calculator table, all you have to do is go in y equals 
we're gonna clear this out. Clear, clear, and we're gonna put this in, 2x squared minus 12x plus 11. And we're gonna look at our table and we'll be able to see where the turning point is. <clears throat> so what you'll notice is in the table, three, negative seven is the point where things start to repeat on the opposite side. So that's your evidence. Okay, so like we said before, completing the square when A is not equal to one is a lot trickier, um, more difficult to master and understand. So what you have to try to remember is that what you're doing is always writing an equivalent expression by trying to add zero one way or another. So <clears throat> what we did here was we were adding the nine, but it's really two times nine. So when you have to subtract, you have to do two times nine as well. That's the one step that's probably gonna trip you up each time. So you just have to try to remember when you pull out that number, you have to remember to multiply it when you subtract again as well, okay? So we're gonna try two together and then you guys are gonna try the last two on your own. So quickly, uh, the only other thing we're gonna do is after we find the turning points, we're gonna say if it's a max or a min. Okay, so let's begin here. We have y equals 5x squared plus 20x plus 23. So I want a to be one, so I'm gonna divide by five and I'm gonna leave what's left here. So it's gonna be x squared plus four x plus 23. Now I'm going to use my completing the square. Four divided by two is two, squared is four. So I'm going to add and subtract this four, but what, remember that we're multiplying by five. So when I add the four, I'm going to subtract five times the four because it's really adding five times four, not just four. And then don't forget your plus 23, okay? So now this turns into x plus two squared, remembering your five on the outside. And now this is minus 20 plus 23, okay? And now this is five times x plus two squared, my, um, plus three, not minus three, plus three. That's our vertex form. Now that means our turning point is going to be opposite of this, which is negative two, same as this, which is three. So our turning point is going to be negative 2, comma 3. And to decide if it's a max or a min, remember you look at your a value. It's positive. It's going to be a minimum. Oops, sorry. Minimum at negative 2, 3. And remember the reason why is because if it's positive, it takes the happy face shape, which means your turning point is at the very bottom. Okay? All right, let's do one more and then you guys can try these on your own. So we have y equals negative two x squared plus four x plus seven. We're gonna factor out the negative two, so be careful, it's gotta be negative. This will leave me with x squared, and now instead of plus two x, it's gonna be minus two x because we're factoring out a negative two, so be careful plus seven. Time to do completing the square. You take your b value, negative two, divide it by two. That gives you negative one. Squaring that gives us one. So we're going to add and subtract with this one. So I have negative two times x squared minus two x plus one. Now I'm going to subtract two times one and bring down my plus seven. So from here, this is gonna turn into the perfect square using this negative one. So it's gonna be negative two times x minus one squared minus two plus seven. Finally, this leaves us with negative two times x minus one squared plus five. So this gives us 
turning point of one, five. Just really quickly before up here when we subtracted this two, this was a negative two, so this should have been positive. So it should be nine. I'm so sorry about that. So it should be one and nine. <clears throat> so now we just have to decide if it's a max or a min. Our leading coefficient's negative, which means frowny face, which means that the turning point's at the very top, which means it's a maximum. Okay, and that's it. So, one thing you have to just remember is that because you're multiplying by that number when you subtract it, you have to multiply as well. So you guys go ahead and try these last two. Pause it, <clears throat> give it a shot, and then come and see if you got the right answer. Okay, so here are the solutions you should get. You should factor out a six here and end up with the vertex form. 6 times x minus 2 squared minus 10, which gives you a minimum at 2, negative 10. Minimum, of course, because we're looking at a positive. Um, here you factor out a negative 1. Okay, be careful. So that becomes positive 12 when you factor it out. Same thing happens before, like I made the mistake before. Same thing happens here. You subtract a negative, so that becomes positive. So you end up with the vertex form of negative. You can leave the one or you can write it like this. X plus six squared plus three, which gives you a maximum at negative six, three. And again, maximum because this is negative. Okay, so that's it. Um, practice makes perfect with this stuff, guys, okay? So have fun.